Okay, good morning, Life Church. We're glad you're here. Awesome. Okay, um, <clears throat> please find in front of you your seat, a um, Connect card. If this is your first visit, fill that out for us, please. We'd like to have a record or just fill it out. It'd be great. We'd love to hear from you. Also use that for your prayer requests. This is your opportunity to get your request before God and on the altar Saturday morning. And we, we join with you this afternoon praying over your needs. And so use those cards and, and uh, help join your faith with ours. And we all pray together about your needs and the, the prayer team. And so Wednesday night, we're still having the stories. We've had some great testimonies and stories and just we just feel like family here, especially, I think, this past Wednesday night. We just felt like family, and we share one another's stories, and, and it, it's been good. So Wednesday night, we also have uh, classes for the teens and nursery for the kids on Wednesday night. So, so come on and, and get with Brother Jerry or one of us if you want to tell your story or you have a testimony you'd like to share for that. It's been quite interesting. Okay, coming up this next Saturday, June the 1st, is the beginning of our MC3. That's three days of fasting and prayer. And you can pick your own way to fast. There's different ways of fasting and, and just getting yourself before God in and, and, and your way. So we have that coming up. The first on Saturday, we pray for your own personal relationship with Christ. And you get that in order. And um, on Sunday will be the prayer for the church, Life Church locally, and the Capital C Church, God's Church. Every born-again believer is a part of God's church. And so that just pray and believe that God will add to his church and, and his kingdom here. So one more on day three. That's Monday. We pray for our local government nationally and for the leadership all around the world and and just here locally in in the church the leadership here we need your prayers and appreciate it very much and so lift us up and and that just uh, follow that and Sunday also children's cup offering coming up so remember to bring your change for Sunday that's a great ministry to the children in Belize and remember that and I don't know how many times I forget that <laughs> <laughs> leave my change at home, but uh, bring it. It'll be a great blessing. So we have all of that, and remember the Saturday morning prayer, and that's uh, the time we have your cards here on the altar, and we have a great time of praying for you. We prayed over this service yesterday morning, a great group of prayer warriors here, and had a great time of prayer and praying for our pastor and for the church. So. That covered it. It's on the bulletin. I'm just kind of going over this with you to give your attention to it. And so you can check back if you need to hear it again. So, okay. At this time, we'll dismiss our children for Children's Church. And and also, as they're going out, we, if we can get our ushers to come forward and get ready for the offering at this time also. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful, Lord, to be able to come out freely to your house, Lord, this morning and just pray and worship and have a time of fellowship here and to hear your word, God. We thank you for this, for your blessings and your provision and for all the things that you bring into our lives, Lord. And as we bring back a portion of that which you've blessed us with, Father, we, we just give freely and with a whole heart, Lord, we just give wholeheartedly to the work of you, your ministry and your church, Lord. Bless it and multiply it and use it for the furtherance of your church, of your kingdom, and for your glory. In Jesus' name.
Good morning. Judy already greeted y'all, and so that is great. Thank you, everybody. And again, we want to reiterate how happy we are today that you are here on this Memorial Day. A lot of people uh, got plans and vacation plans and grilling plans, and let's just don't forget what this day is about. Anyone here in the uh, sanctuary today that you are currently uh, serving in military? Anyone here that's currently in the military? Nobody? Okay. Anybody here who has served in the military? Let me see you. Okay, one. Won't you stand up? If you, if you have served your veterans, Michael, you're the only one. Let's give Michael a hand. We certainly do appreciate all of those who have served, some have served, and given ultimately their life for our freedom, not only here but in other countries as well. And like Judy said earlier, Jesus, he paid it all so that we could have life and more abundantly. Amen? I just really feel like today that God is uh, moving in our midst, and that's my desire and mine and Judy's vision that we see God meet the needs of the people. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in, okay? <laughs> I'm going to jump right in. You'll see where we're going when we get started. I'm going to talk to you today about the anointing. And I think, I think maybe we have that song at the end of the service, possibly, hopefully, anointing fall on me. I think so. Uh, anyway, that, it, it, we, hope, we hope we have that. But if we don't, Judy can sing it. She can sing anything. Judy wasn't feeling good today. Didn't even know if she'd be able to come. Uh, she's kind of having one of those Judy mornings. Anybody ever have a Judy morning? And, uh, but I finally, said, I finally said, Judy, if you don't feel like coming, you know, I'll get through it somehow or another without you. I don't know how. Uh, I've, I've tried to do services before, and well, we did something the other day at the nursing home, and she didn't feel like going. I, I just bombed out, and uh, I just can't get along without her. Well, I mean, we've been together for be 64 years in December. Uh, mar married that long, married that long, yeah. So uh, I guess I guess you kind of feel attached to the hip after a while. So, I'm just going to jump right into this and talk to you about the anointing today. Isaiah 10, 27, where we're going to start. And it shall come to pass in that day. When I read that, I got to thinking about that day. Could that day be this day for some of you? Actually, for any of you. If you will position your heart to get ready to receive from the Lord throughout the service and by the end of the service, I believe that day can be this day for you. Can you just say that, Lord, let that day be this day for me? It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That's how the yoke is destroyed, because of the anointing. Now, in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28, Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. So this yoke that Isaiah is talking about is not the yoke of the Lord. Amen? This yoke is a different yoke that is imposed upon you by the cares of this world and by the things that come against us in our everyday life. I believe that Jesus is coming back one day. 
I don't know when he's coming back. But in, while I am waiting and anticipating the coming, second coming of the Lord Jesus, I want to try to give you something on Sunday morning that will help you get through the rest of the week. That's my goal and that's my, des- my desire. I don't know if I always meet that need or not, but that's what, that's what I want to accomplish every Sunday that I come and stand here before you is that I will give you something that you can take home with you and you can think about throughout the week. So in Isaiah here, he said, it's going to come to pass in that day that the burden is going to be lifted, taken away from you, and the yoke that is on your neck is going to be destroyed. Now, if something is destroyed, that means it no longer exists. Amen? Y'all ever destroyed anything? <laughs> it, it no, it's no longer there. It's destroyed. So I believe today that Jesus not only can help you and lift your burdens and encourage you, but I believe he can destroy, take away, get rid of, cause it to no longer exist, whatever it is that's been bothering you. Somebody said, well, that's a big order. I serve a big God. And the yoke that Jesus offers is easy. Somebody said, I'm so burdened down today. I'm so heavy in heart. Jesus said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Now, uh, I want to read some in the uh, NIV today in Exodus I didn't plan on reading this until this morning. And I was only going to read verse 13. Exodus 14, uh, chapter, chapter 14 and verse 13. But as I was meditating on that this morning and going over my thoughts and my notes that I felt like that I'd been getting from the Lord all week long, I just, I just couldn't stop reading this. I just, I just kept reading. So... I may just go through the entire chapter. I don't know. It's it's not too long. Uh, So let's just start here in verse 13. Remember we said the yoke is destroyed. It no longer exists. It's no longer a part of you. It's no longer on your neck. Moses answered the people. Now this is after they'd come through all those trials and tribulations and all the miracles that uh, God had given Moses to show uh, Pharaoh and he still wouldn't let the people and the last one that he did, uh, Pharaoh's child died, and the firstborn of all Egypt died, even animals. And so at this point, Pharaoh says, I've had it, I'm going to let you go. And so in verse 13, they're at the Red Sea, Pharaoh is after them, he had a change of heart again, and he said, we can't let them go, we don't know what we're going to do, we don't have anybody to serve us if we let the Israelites go. So they're standing at the Red Sea, and Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord that he will bring to you today. Now, this is, the, this is the only part I was going to read. It says, the Egyptians you see today, you will never, say never. You will never see again. If something is destroyed, you'll never see it again. You can't recall it. You can't get it back. You can't get the burden back. It's gone forever. The old King James says, the Egyptians that you will see today said you will see them no more forever. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch your hand out over the sea and divide the water that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And I'll harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will go in after them And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army through his chariots and the horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord and that I gain glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord, who had been traveling in front. Aren't you glad the angel can move around? Yeah, he don't don't have to stand in one place. The angel of the Lord, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew. And went behind. Now, why would the angel that's been in front go behind? The pillar of cloud also moved from in front. That's what was leading them. 
and stood behind them. Coming between, that's why the angel came back there, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other, so that neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand. Okay, all of you know the rest of this story, right? You, you've seen the Ten Commandments on TV, right? <laughs> okay, so we all, we all know how this story ends. I mean, God even knocked the chariot wheels off of the chariots. And they bogged down. They could not get through there. So what I'm telling you today is this. Whenever God destroys something, it's gone. Some of you have had a yoke and a burden on your neck for too long. I believe today is the day. In that day, I believe that day is this day for you. Can you believe that? Can you perceive that? Can you have faith with me today? The Bible said if any two or three agree on earth as touching anything, it shall be done. Can you agree with me? And I agree with you that today will be this day that the burden, the yoke will be lifted off of your neck and it will, you will not be bothered with this again ever. Does that sound like good news? Amen. Well, the gospel is good news. That's what it means. The gospel is good news. I'm going to skip the next one there, uh, Mark, 1 John 2, 27. Let's just skip on down to Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38 said how God anointed Jesus. Who anointed Jesus? of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. What was he anointed with? And with power. Who went about doing what? And healing how many? All that were oppressed. I mean, those the devil brings oppression and depression and recession. <laughs> I don't know how many more sessions. But Jesus went about doing good, anointed of God with the Holy Ghost, healing all. Are you included in all? That were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And in Psalms chapter 23 and verse 5, David says this about God. You, almighty God, prepare a table before me in the presence of of my enemies. So I have enemies. So what? God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. There's so much anointing that comes down from God. That it just fills up my cup. And it just runs over. Right in the presence of my enemies. Psalms chapter 133 and verse 1 says, How good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. I hope we're all in unity today. That's God's plan. That's God's plan for all of us. And then he describes what unity feels like in verse 2. It's like the precious ointment, which is like anointing, uh, that was on the head that ran down on Aaron's beard and went all the way down to the bottom of his garment. So he said this ointment that came down upon Aaron, it started at the top of his head and it went all the way down to the bottom of his garment. They had long robes back in those days. So if it went to the bottom of his garment, I'm sure it went all the way down to his feet. Can you say amen? So then the anointing that God gives come on top of us and flows on us, through us, and goes all the way down to our feet. So we can say the anointing of God can hit you in the top of your head and go all the way to the bottom of your feet. Amen. How many like to have that today? Mm. I do not want to attempt to do anything for God without his anointing. 
I do not want to stand up here in what some people call the sacred place without the anointing of God. I prayed this morning and I prayed all week, God, if your anointing is not going to be on me, I may as well just go sit down because I don't know anything and I can't do anything without the anointing of God. I, 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 I'm not smart enough. I don't know if you figured that out yet or not, but I, I'm not smart enough to be able to do things without the anointing of God. We have to have the anointing of God. Whenever Judy stood up here this morning with the anointing of God, trying to encourage you to worship and go along with the songs you know, I told her this morning, I said, you don't have to go if you don't want to. She said, I have to go. <laughs> I have to go. I said, well, you don't have to. She said, I got to go. I got to be up there. And so that means that she's depending on God's anointing to help her. Amen. I'm depending on God's anointing today, and I know that you are. The anointing on your life may be the most precious thing that you can have besides your salvation and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. The anointing on your life may very well be. I hope you're getting this today and understand and realize how important and essential it is to have the anointing of God, to live for God, and to be a witness for God, and to do the work of God. You say, well, preacher, I'm just sitting here in the pew. You know, I'm not, I'm not called to preach. I'm not called to be in the pulpit. I'm not called to do worship. You are called to serve God. Yeah. And you have to have the anointing of God to serve Him in this wicked world that we live in. Yeah. The anointing is not to be taken lightly or for granted. That's what Samson did. He had the anointing. The anointing was in his long hair in, the, in that day because it was a Nazarite vow. And so his hair was long, and so his wife kept uh, tempting him and te teasing him and saying, tell me where your strength is, and he would tease her. And he said, if you bind me with uh, ropes that have never been used and uh, these things, that I'll be just like any other man, I'll be weak. And then the Philistines would come upon him and he'd break the, uh, the ropes and beat them all up. And so this happened two or three times. And so finally uh, she got to him. The Bible says a nagging woman's like a dingo dripping on a roof. <laughs> That's paraphrased a little bit. But anyway, she just kept nagging, and she kept talking. And she said, you just don't love me. If you love me, you would tell me, you know. And so finally, he just he couldn't stand it no longer. He said, okay, the anointing is not to be taken lightly, but reverently and appreciative. And I think Samson did not appreciate the anointing that God had placed upon his life because sure enough, whenever he lost his hair, he lost his anointing. I'm glad anointing my hair. I'd be in trouble. If you're a child of God today, how many are? If you're a child of God today, you can have the anointing of God on your life. The anointing has been called many things and explained many ways. In the Old Testament, it was poured on your head in the form of oil to do the works of God. And so I've heard people say that they felt like hot oil whenever they were prayed for, whenever they were in the presence of God. They felt like hot oil was poured on them and ran all the way down to their feet. I don't know if you've ever felt that or not. But anyway, it's a, it's a great sensational feeling just to feel the warmth of God come over you. I ain't talking about hot flashes, ladies. I'm talking about the anointing of God that comes from heaven, and men can get this too, and comes all over you. Amen? In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, the anointing came down on Jesus in the form of a dove whenever he was baptized of John in the river of Jordan. And God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So don't try 
to figure out the anointing. Somebody said, well, this kind of sounds scary to me. Preacher, you're kind of scaring me. I don't want you to try to figure out the anointing today. All I'm asking you is to position yourself for it. All you got to do today is just position yourself for it. And you say, I'm tired of this yoke that's been hanging on me, and I'm ready to get rid of it. In the book of James, chapter 5, and verse 14, it says, if you are sick, you want sick today? If you are sick, call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you, anointing you with oil. You ever heard of that? In the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and This is a double whammy. And if you committed sins, they'll be forgiven. Wow. How much better can you get than that? That's like a double dip of ice cream. Not only can you get healed, but you can be forgiven. In the old days, (laughs) I can talk about them. In the old days, you would not hardly ever go into a Pentecostal, non-denominational, charismatic, assembly of God, church of God, church of God in Christ, et cetera, et cetera, without seeing a little bottle of anointing oil somewhere up around the front. Anybody ever been to a church like that? I have a little vial this morning of anointing oil. Somebody said, well, that's kind of scary. <laughs> I, I had an aunt one time that went to a tent meeting, and she, she we, we were raised Baptist. And so in this tent meeting, people were falling out. You know, anybody ever seen that happen? Somebody say, you scared me, preacher. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, we're going somewhere. And so anyway, she went to this tent meeting, and the, there was a lady evangelist, and she had a, a little hanky. Some, I don't know what's with those women preachers. They always got to have a little hanky, you know. You ever see Vestal Goodman on Bill Gaither? And so they always got this hanky, you know. And so whenever she'd pray for people, it just so happened in this particular meeting that some people were falling out to what's called in the spirit. And so my aunt told me, she said, I got that figured out, Jerry. And uh, they called me by my double name, Jerry Wayne. And she said, I got that figured out, Jerry Wayne. I said, what's that? And that's when we were all Baptists. And she said, well, you see a little hanky she's waving around? I said, yeah. She said, she's got ether on that. <laughs> and said, wave it in front of them, say so you're going to fall out. <laughs> this ain't no ether. Okay. It's the anointing. Amen. Amen. Wow. Call for the elders of the church if you're sick. Pray over your anointing with oil. And, you know, some people got carried away in those days. They just, they, they had a big bottle. They just kind of poured it. I got a little bit of bottle. I got a little dab of do, you know. But anyway, everyone, everyone will not respond to the anointing the same way. Judy and I have seen everything. I promise you. We've been in ministry for over 60 years, and we've been everywhere. We're like Hank Snow's song. We've been everywhere, man. We've been, we've, been, we've been as far north as Canada. We've been as far south as old Mexico. We've been overseas, and we have literally seen everything. I've seen the anointing on people, and I've seen what some people call the anointing that I'm not sure what it was. And that's why a lot of people are afraid of the anointing and maybe even afraid to preach like this. But there is a real anointing that comes from a real God. And there's other stuff that I'm not too sure where it comes from, but it don't come from God. And so that's, we're, 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 we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the real anointing. I believe if you can get the anointing on you, you can get stuff off you. Woo! Yeah. I believe today in this service, if you can get the anointing on you, you can get the burden off of you. You can get the yoke off of your neck. Remember where we started, Isaiah 10 and 27? So, we're getting ready 
I can't believe it. We're getting ready next Sunday to start our sixth month here. Leading you, shepherding you, pastoring you, praying for you, listening to you, encouraging you. I cannot believe it. Sixth month, next Sunday, we're starting our sixth month. And here lately, and maybe it's just because of this message today, but as I was praying over this and studying the Word of God, it just seems like I sense in my spirit that there is a different, deeper feeling, anointing of God on Life Church and on the people here. It just seems like even, even, even the worship, you know, as Judy stands up here, and whenever we first started, I, I said, Judy, I said, you know, I said, we've always had a band. We, you, you've always played music, and we've always had worship leaders. And I said, we've we got to work with this video. This, it's all we have, you know. We don't, there's no, nobody up here, just me and Jesus. And <laughs> I don't see nobody else up here, do you? And I said, we've got to work with what we've got. And Judy said, I just don't know if I can do that. And so I said, well, I said, I don't know either. I said, I, I don't know if I can do what I'm supposed to do. But I said, I'm going to do the best that I can with the opportunity that I have. And so, so we are doing what we can, and I'm sensing and feeling that there's a different level of anointing that is coming upon us, coming upon Judy, coming upon me, and coming upon you as people in Life Church. I believe God's getting ready to do something exceptional. We're coming into another level, anointing. The anointing is a spiritual feeling that comes on a physical place or a physical being. This is a physical place. You are physical beings. You're not from outer space. Some of you may be spacey. But you're not from outer space. You didn't come in. You know, with little green men. But this, the Spirit of God that I am referring to today and talking about, the anointing, it is a spiritual feeling. Whenever the anointing oil was poured upon the prophets of old, sometimes they would prophesy blessings upon a group of people. And sometimes they would prophesy judgment on people because of the anointing. The anointing is something that comes from heaven and it lands on earth. It's like God kisses the earth and you get caught in the middle of the smack. Woo! David said, taste of the Lord and see that he is good. The anointing can come on you and cause you to cut a step that you didn't learn from the dance instructor. I hadn't seen that happen in a while, but it can happen. The anointing can come on you and cause you to get up out of your seat and run circles in church. I hadn't seen that happen lately either. But it could happen. The anointing can come on you and cause the hair on the back of your neck, if you got any, to kind of stand up on each other. Anybody ever felt that? But you scared me, preacher. The anointing can cause chill bumps to come over you and you ain't cold. Just chills just kind of run all over your arm. The anointing is something tangible that you can feel. The anointing can come on you and cause you to run. Now, I'm not talking about jogging. I've done that for years. The anointing can cause you to run faster and farther than you ever have. I must not have had much anointing when I was doing that. I just never felt too much anointing when I was running. I felt more endurance. First Kings 
chapter 18 and verse 46 says, Elijah ran ahead of Ahab's horses. How many knows what ahead means? Nobody knows? In front? I've run enough races that if someone was ahead of me, they was outrunning me. If I saw somebody ahead of me, they was up front. The Bible said here that Elijah ran ahead of Ahab's horses. Are, are y'all getting this? Do you, do you know what that means? That was a 30-mile, that was a 30-mile run. I've run marathons, 20, 26, 26 points. It's been a while since I've done that. <laughs> That's a long ways. Elijah, the Bible said, was ahead, outrunning Ahab's horses. I don't, do, do you get visions when you read the Bible? Can, can you visualize with me today? When, when, when I'm reading this, I don't, I don't just say, well, Elijah ran ahead of Ahab's horses. I've got to I gotta get into this. And, and I, I see Elijah that's prayed for a drought that's been going on over three years. And he tells his servant to go out and look and said, see if he's seen his sign of rain. And his servant went out and he came back several times. He said, I don't see nothing. Elijah said, go again. Finally, he come back and said, well, I don't see much. A little old cloud by the side of a man's hand. Elijah said, I hear an abundance of rain. Yes. Glory to God. And so, so, he tells Ahab, you better get ready. The rain's coming. So Ahab gets his horses ready, heads out, trying to beat the rain that Elijah has prophesied is going to come. All of a sudden, he hears something behind him. Splish, splash, as I was taking it. No. Splash, splash. And he looks back, and he can't believe what he sees. It's Elijah running behind the chariot. Can y'all see this? It's Elijah running behind the chariot. And so... He looks and he cracks his whip across the back of those horses. And I don't know what's wrong with your horses. He gets with it here. And so he cracks his whip again. About that time, he lied to. Did you lose my microphone? Hallelujah. About that time, Elijah goes past. Don't y'all love all this noise and technology? About that time, Elijah goes past. Ahab looks at him, and Elijah says, Nope, it ain't steroids. Nope, it ain't dope. It's anointing. And then just to make the story good, it's like the roadrunner says, Beep, beep. Just kept on going. Something got a hold of me. That was before marathons and ultra marathons. Elijah kicked in the afterburn and just goes right on past. When I was a jogger, I called myself a runner, but I never was a runner. But when I was a jogger, I felt what some runners call the second wind sometime. But I promise you it never lasted 30 miles I don't even know if it lasted 30 seconds. It felt good while it was there, but it didn't last. But Elijah had something on him that caused him to outrun chariots and horses for 30 miles. Now, that's pretty miraculous, people. We could describe the anointing by saying the ability of God on and through you to do what you could not otherwise do. When you pray, under the anointing, it's a complete different deal. Wow. I mean, when you, when you pray and you just know that you entered into the throne room and you know that you've touched God and God has touched you, it just makes all the difference in the world. Whenever you play music, which we don't have here right now, but whenever you play under the anointing, it's a complete different feeling. The anointing is better than skill. 
David played his harp, and even though the Bible says he was skillful, he was also anointed, and the anointing that David had whenever he played his harp literally drove demons off of Saul. The anointing can get the devil off of your back. The anointing can get the devil off of your neck. The anointing can get the devil out of your thoughts. So I'm telling you today that the anointing can do things that you cannot do otherwise. There was a cat, and he was chasing a mouse. And he's chasing a mouse all around the house. And all of a sudden, the mouse went downstairs. And as he went downstairs, it was dark, and he couldn't see where he was going. The cat comes down, and he's still chasing that mouse. After a while, the little mouse got up on the edge of a wine barrel that was in the cellar. And somehow or another, he lost his balance, and he fell over in the wine barrel. Well, he swam around a little bit, and in the process of swimming around, he was, you know, drinking some wine. He couldn't help it because he's doused with wine. He comes out, and he shakes himself. He gets up on the edge of the wine barrel. They look around and say, where is that cat now? That's what the anointing will do for you. The anointing, whenever you get under the anointing, it will cause things to happen, and you will feel different. You will have a boldness. You'll have a confidence. You'll have an assurance that you did not have before. The anointing is something you can feel. It's tangible. It's from the spirit world, but it affects the physical world and affects you physically. Now, performance is good, and I've seen some great performers, but performance at its best is no substitute for the anointing. Some performers will even try to substitute, and they will try to substitute education. They will try to substitute degrees, and all of that is good, and God will and can use all of that, but it will not in any way take place of the anointing. God can and sometimes does anoint education and performance, but in and by itself, it is so little compared to the anointing. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So this word, if we don't have the anointing upon it, it doesn't give us life. So we have to have the anointing on us if we're going to do something for God. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled. That's NIV. The King James says ignorant and unlearned. Uh, that's just kind of harsh. But the Bible says in the NIV they were unschooled, ordinary men. I think that's more definite uh, translation there. They were ordinary men. And they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. Now, it was not, I want you to understand this, it was not their lack of education or being unschooled that made the difference. What made the difference was the anointing. That's what made the difference. The anointing can stand alone and is sufficient all by itself. In Acts chapter 3 and verses 6 through 8, uh, Peter and John, they're going up to the temple to pray. And so there's this beggar that's been crippled from life sitting out the front of the temple on the temple stairs there. And so Peter just says, we don't have any gold. We don't have any silver. But what we do have, at about that time, the anointing from heaven came down and touched Peter. And he said, that that we do have, we'll give to you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says he reached out his hand and he took him. And the Bible says instantly or immediately he felt strength, the cripple did, in his feet and his ankles. And not only did he start walking but leaping and jumping and praising God because of the anointing. Amen? So the anointing can cause you to do things that you would not otherwise do. So, my question, are you willing to allow God's anointing on your life 
if he chooses today. Are you? Okay. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Some churches can say many are cold and few are frozen. We don't want that. We want the called and the chosen, right? Not the few and the frozen. Some people can confuse the anointing with personality. That's why some people go all over the place trying to find some preacher that's got some prophetic word or some of this or some healing power or something like that. So, but the anointing can come on anybody. And when the anointing leaves, they're just like any other person. When I feel the anointing, I feel so good. I feel so confident. I feel like I'm more than able to do what I'm called to do. But I must remember that it is the anointing that God gives me, and I can do nothing without Him. But when I feel the anointing, I kind of feel like that little mouse. Where's my problems now? Where's my sickness now? Where's my aches and pains now? Where's that doctor's report now? Where's my checkbook that says I'm out of balance? <laughs> huh? Yeah. When I, when I get under the anointing, I feel like that, don't you? Amen. When, the, when you feel the anointing, it just makes you feel like you can do anything. It may, it may, it may feel like an adrenaline that a runner feels sometimes when, when he's just in that 5K and man, he just sees the finish line and boy, all of a sudden he just feels it. But whenever it lifts sometimes, it feels like the wall in a 20 miles in a marathon. <laughs> you say, wow, whenever it lifts. You may think, wow, I would like to be under that anointing. 24 hours a day. If Elijah would not have come out from under that anointing when he ran, outran Ahab's horses, he'd just been like Forrest Gump. He'd just kept on going. You have to come out from under the anointing. Sometimes after the anointing, you may even feel drained. Sometimes after the anointing, you may feel tired. Sometimes Judy comes home, comes home from church and she says, I'm so tired. <laughs> The anointing sometimes after it lifts off of you, you'll be so tired. You'll be weary. And sometimes you may even feel depressed. Somebody says, well, I don't want if it's going to make me feel like that. You have to understand that the anointing is from heaven and we live on earth and we face earthly things. The anointing is a whole different dimension than earthly things. The anointing is for a purpose. While it is true you may feel good, but the purpose is for you to be able to do things you could not do before with a boldness that you did not have before. Allowing God to move to and through you, causing you to do what you could not do. For instance, pastoring a church. Going into the sixth month next week. After being retired from pastoring 20 plus years. That's what the anointing can do. It'll give you confidence. It'll give you boldness. It'll make you feel like that little mouse. Where, where are the problems now? What's going on now? How, what, what do you mean we can't make it here? Yes, we can make it here because we have the anointing of God. So, and the anointing can cause you to get a sermon every week, dear Lord. Where I used to get a half a dozen a year sometimes. The anointing. Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion of his anointing. And Elijah said, you have asked for a very hard thing. That's in 2 Kings 2, 9, uh, 9 through 12. But Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me, whenever I leave, you can have the wish that you have granted. You can have what you've asked for. And so he would not leave Elijah's side. He st Elijah's side. Elisha stayed right on his heels. And all of a sudden, whenever God got ready to take him, the Bible said chariots of horses and fire came down and took him to heaven. And Elisha saw it, and the cloak came down, and Elisha wrapped the cloak of Elijah around him. And then he went to the river that, had, that Elijah had smote with, the, with his cloak and opened it. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the same thing happened. And actually, if you read the entire story all the way through there, you'll find out that Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah. Would you stand? We got that song, Anointing Fall on Me. I'm praying that the anointing will fall today and touch people's hearts and lives. And if you want to position yourself for the anointing of God to be on you like never before and get burdens and yokes off of you 
I'm going to invite you to come stand across the front. I'm going to pray the prayer of faith that I believe you'll agree with me and you'll be set free in Jesus' name. You start coming. I think we're getting the song ready. Anointing, follow me. Amen. I believe today is going to be a special day for you. I believe, I just honestly believe, I'm not just preaching to blow wind. I'm believing the word of God that I have preached today. As a matter of fact, I may come by and touch you with a little bit of anointing oil just because that's what the Bible said. Okay, is that song coming? I got it. Oh, you got it. Okay. Anointing.